Well, good afternoon. It is noon. It's Friday. God, aren't you glad it's Friday? I'm so glad it's Friday. Oh my gosh, it's like the weekend is finally here. And um, this is Amanda, and you are, what, what is the official title at Provisions Market Hall? I just call you the wine expert. I like that. Um, I'm the manager of Blackboard Wine Bar within Provisions. So if you are, are, are out, and I mean, if you're like me, I don't really know, I mean, I know what I like, but I don't really know what kind of wines are different. You know what I mean? I think a lot of us are that way. And so she, you can come in here and talk to Amanda or her staff, and they can get you, tell them what you're looking for. opening new doors and having people experience new things. So this is Oregon Wine Month. It is. And Dennis, that doesn't mean that you get to wine mm -hmm. in Oregon Wine Month. It means Oregon wine, you sample and try new wines and new things that are going on. That's right. So how are you guys celebrating here at Provisions Market Hall? So we are lucky enough to have long-standing relationships with many pioneering Oregon winemakers and um, we're doing a couple little fun promotions to get the word out on all kinds of wonderful bottles that exist out there. Starting with every Thursday at Provisions Market Hall from 5 to 7, we are featuring three Oregon wines for tasting, complimentary tasting. Um, so they just come down in here and they'll be available and they can try that? Yep. Oh, that's so Every awesome. Thursday for the month of May. Because that, that way we get to try something different. Because don't we get, don't people you find they get stuck in a wine? Yes, they absolutely do. And it's time to try new things. There's so much Oregon is doing that's even beyond Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris that everyone needs to try. And some of our champagnes and stuff are, yes. oh my gosh, amazing. And people don't think of Oregon as champagne, but we are becoming... A champagne place. Oh yeah, 100 percent and we actually grow very well the same varietals that they grow in champagne for true champagne production and there's sparkling wine houses that are literally just sparkling wine houses that's all they do that they're popping up here and there and it's a really exciting and you guys on May 17th there's a wine class and these are mm -hmm. you got to get in I'll tell you I, I warn people because we we tell you about these and they fill up really really fast they do it's 50 bucks a person it's on the 17th at 5 30 but what do they go when they come to that what happens so I'll, I'll be teaching that you'll be with me um, it's I really like having uh, what's the word people participating I want to answer questions I want to get you to try new things and I want you to know what you're looking for when you go shopping I explain wine labels I explain how to read bottles and um, how to taste how to pick out what you like so you know how to find that the next time. Because there, there really is an art to this. Is there's an education and an art to wine to there know is. it. There is, but at the same time, it's just knowing what you like. Like if you know what you like, you know more than most wine experts. And you can't know that very well until you've tried enough. Yeah, that's the fun part. To get to know wine, you just have to keep drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> and Amanda is the best, Melissa says. Oh, Do you know thanks, Melissa? Melissa. <laughs> Melissa, I can't pronounce your last name, Weedman, and then she mm -hmm. has another last name in there. So you've come in and had tried that before. See, for me, like rosé, I don't know how to look at a bottle of rosé and know if it's too sweet or not sweet. Well, that's one thing that we're here for, so never be afraid to approach your local wine shop guy or gal because we know every single bottle here. We've tasted through them all. We can tell you. You tell us, I want fruity, I want mineral, I want citrus, I want... A berry flavor will match you to that wine. So for those Thursdays, that's the good thing about it is mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I honestly, I don't know what I want. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know certain things that I like, but there's a lot of stuff about it I don't really know. So if I'm not tasting it, and so you can say, now, what do you taste in that? And then I know. Exactly. So getting to try things is the best way to learn and to know what you like. And that's what the classes are great for, too, because I pick kind of off the beaten path out there bottles that you probably wouldn't normally pick off the shelf by yourself. Um, but to put these wines on your radar is going to be really exciting. So um, the other thing is how about pairing it with food? You guys do, you guys help people I with that? I definitely talk about that every single class. I absolutely break that down and make it simple and easy because it is easier than most people think. We, we overdo this in our brain. We overthink it, yeah. Like champagne, one of my favorite pairings with champagne is potato chips. It really works. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, do you think that we're too, we get too highbrow about it sometimes? I think we think that wine's supposed to be highbrow and it colors how we shop and how we think we're supposed to enjoy it. But really wine is 
of the people for the people and you should enjoy it the way. And you're the way. person who gets to sit down here with everybody and you, you, you don't really drink it. You put it in your mouth, you taste it, and then you spit it out. Yes. And I come down here, I walk through here, and I watch them, and I'm going, oh my gosh, what a great job. Because <laughs> you really know the flavors of all this, don't you? It's like a muscle. You have to work it out. You have to practice, and yes, it's, it gets a little old tasting 50 wines every Tuesday, but I can't convince anyone that that actually gets old. Yeah, that, yeah, but you will, that's like any job. So what is a tip you could give people, like if they're out looking for a red, what is something you tell people to, to, to watch for? Um, I really would just find, don't be afraid to ask for help. We're here to help you. We're not trying to upsell you. We're trying to match you to something that you actually want to drink. And if you're honest with us, you know, those of us who are bringing these wines in for your consumption, we can, we can help you. And just be honest. Be honest about what you like. That's the best thing you can do. I had a guy one time, he was a winery, you know, they, you could tell we were at this thing and everybody's paying a lot of money. And he goes, so Rick, for you, what's a good red wine? And this is years ago. And I went, oh, you know, eight ninety nine. And he goes, you know, and then I tasted a hundred dollar <laughs> bottle of red wine and I went, there is a difference. Yeah, and you do get what you pay for. You you do, and one of the my favorite analogies is, you know, you have a fifteen dollar bottle of wine. It's like a Honda Civic. Honda Civics are great. Lots of people drive them. They're reliable and great. But you know the difference when you step behind the wheel of a Mercedes Benz. Right. Which is how wine is. You know? Corey says I'd like to find more fruity, sweet wines like Nahalem Bay Peach or Blackberry. That I I totally understand that. We don't really specialize in. Fruit, fruit wines, berry wines, but we have sweet wines here based on grapes that are traditionally produced in a sweet style, and we would love to hook you up with those. So Pinot Gris, what's, um, it's Oregon, we're known for Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Riesling, and Chardonnay. So what's your favorite right now? What, yours, I wanna know what your favorite is. Um, my favorite wine off the shelf, or just? Sure. Today, if I. Today, she, she <laughs> tastes 50 bottles a week, okay? So get, be, be patient with her. Um, I'm pretty enamored with Pinot Meunier, actually. Do you have it? I do. Okay, hold on. We're going to see what she's... You guys, this, this, is, this is fun. Okay. So, this is Teutonic Wine Company, and I'm going to be featuring this for my Wild Wines of Oregon class on May 17th. Pinot Meunier is a really fun vinified red, but it's also one of the grapes used predominantly in Champagne for sparkling wine production, and they're starting to use it here in Oregon for sparkling wine and red wine. And it's just... Sometimes you don't want Pinot Noir or Pinot Gris. You want something different, and this is a really fun, different wine. And you guys, this is right out of Oregon City, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is so cool. So it is a red, then? It's a red, and just got a little more spice notes, a little more kind of plummy color, acid. It's really fun to play with. It's a great food wine. So um, how do you learn all this? Reading. I've been in wine for 10 years and I read nonstop. You have to, <laughs> it's 99% it geography. Because it probably changes too, huh? It's 99% geography. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And you'll never know everything, even the wine experts. You'll, you're a student for life when you're a student of wine. So what do you think the next big thing in wine is going to be? Well, there's Tanya saying aloha. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Amanda <laughs> and I are here. The, no blue hair today. <laughs> so what do you think the new thing is going to be in Oregon wine? Um, I think the new thing is going to be a lot of what my wild wines class is going to cover. Natural wine production, spontaneous fermentation, um, less hands-on winemaking, and more kind of letting the vineyard speak for itself, and different varietals. We're really experimenting with different varietals that are beyond just Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris. What's the newest one, the variety that you see? Um, well, I mean, this isn't really new. People have been seeing this, but Tempranillo is cropping up more and more, being made better. And, I like um, it. Oh, yeah. I, I was down in, in fact, I'm heading down there this weekend. It's Applegate area. Yeah, they and, do it wonderfully. Oh, my gosh. They do such a great job with that down there. They do. And the other one, too, that is um, really coming up is Gamay. Is, I never heard of that. So if you've ever had Beaujolais Nouveau or Beaujolais from the southern region, it's, it touches the bottom of Burgundy, France. Okay. You've had Gamay. Okay. And it's a and that's bright, a grape? fruity red grape. Yeah. Okay. And we're starting to produce that really well here, and that's here really Oregon. exciting. Mm -hmm. So when you say natural wines, what does that mean? I don't know. That means we're not, they're not using uh, lab-derived yeast to 
start fermentation. You know how grapes look dusty in the vineyard? They're dusty because natural yeast is kind of naturally bonded to grapes in nature. So they won't add yeast, they'll just yet let the yeast that are existing on the grapes start fermentation for them. And it creates a very different flavor profile, kind of farmy, gamey, meaty, savory. I have um, never had that. I never even heard of it. Yeah. Well, come to my class. No, this is okay. <laughs> so again, it's what, the 17th? Mm -hmm. So you guys, May 17th, um, Amanda will teach you that and so much more. Plus, you, you have her right there. How many people usually show up at these classes? Uh, we usually save space for 10, 12 if there's a lot of interest. Okay, so it's 50 bucks a person, but you're going to be able to walk out of here and save. There's, there is, well, aside from going to a really bad movie mm -hmm. and wasting two hours of your life, there's nothing worse to me than spending... You know, 30 bucks on a bottle of wine and not liking it. Exactly. You know, and it's because it's supposed to be enjoyed. That's what you're supposed to do, right? It is, yes. All right, so if you guys want more information, all you have to do is go online, um, Provisions Market uh, website, and you can sign up. But I'm telling you, you got to sign up for these classes really early. And also, you'll see a list of everything else that's going on at um, Provisions and at the market because I, I, this summer, classes for kids at cooking are mm -hmm. going to fill up like you would not believe. They do like summer camp for a week and the kids come down here with their friends and they learn how to cook. Um, Amanda has the looks and the brains. Did you see Tanya? Yeah, there, well, she's got it going. So you guys be sure and go on there and look because if you're looking for something unusual and fun and actually really um, And they all get to eat it, but they go home understanding a little bit more about what they're and doing. And they're super so. cute. Oh, God. The first time we came down here and all the kids were doing their thing. And they're having fun. It's, a, it's kind of a, a really high-class kind of fun summer camp thing. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Tanya, I hope you have fun in Hawaii. And we'll be looking for you coming back. And um, we're just going to go drink some wine and go... Tanya. <laughs> All right, see you later. All right, guys, remember, Provisions Market Hall, that's the place to get it. All right, have a good weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.